What's up, people? It's your boy Ricky Ross back with another video. It's been a while since I released a video. Um, for those of you out there who don't know me, I go by Ricky Ross, an Amazon Germany seller. Uh, I've been doing this for quite some time now. Uh, and I also do mentor other uh, German sellers also, Amazon Germany sellers also. So uh, if you're, thank you for joining my uh, channel. If this is your first time watching my videos, I appreciate it. And for those people watching it, I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, please continue. Uh, and right now, please do the neat fool, uh, like the video, share, share, comment, uh, and the whole nine. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Today, we're going to talk about VAT, the dreaded topic, V-A-T, Value Added Tax. Um, and today, today with me, I have uh, a VAT specialist, Demetra, and I'll let Demetra introduce himself. So, Demetra, please int introduce uh, yourself to the people. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is uh, Dimitar. Um, as Chris mentioned, I'm um, a VAT specialist. Um, I specialize in compliance and I help businesses and e-commerce um, sellers with their expansion across Europe. And I make sure that they are compliant wherever they, they trade. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I have been specializing in this industry for the past I think it's over five years now. Um, first, my my focus was on big uh, companies who are trading mainly business to business. But then, with the time, I found out that actually my passion my passion is more towards helping um, the beginners, the entrepreneurs who are just launching their businesses uh, either on Amazon or other platforms, and just uh, helping them navigate through the ever changing actually. A VAT field. Awesome. Um, that's a little bit of uh, introduction for myself. I believe um, Rick will leave some some details of myself in the comment section, um, and you can reach me out from there. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. So, um, just like he said, uh, we're going to discuss a little bit more about that in relationship to. Not just only Germany, but I think Europe in okay. general. Um, yeah. It's a huge topic and very confusing. Very, very confusing. So first of all, um, the first question... Okay, let's differentiate two things. Okay, Demetra is a VAT specialist. He's not like an accountant, meaning he's not uh, a tax specialist. That, that that sounds crazy. He's a VAT specialist, but not a tax specialist. Okay, so I just wanted to get that out there, so we kind of like all understand what we're going to be concentrating on today. But here's my first question, Dimitra: What is the difference between uh, VAT and income tax? Well. That's a very good question, uh, and I'm sure many sellers are asking that themselves exactly the same thing. Um, in terms of, in order to differentiate them, I would like to first um, set out what is the definition for value-added tax, or commonly known as VAT. Yes. Um, and by the books, this is a tax um, on supplies of goods and services that you make uh, to another person, to another taxable person in the course of furtherance, furtherance of a business. In more simple terms, VAT basically is, is a, a tax which is payable on the sales of goods and services within the territory of the European Union. And because it's outside of the EU, it's called slightly different and it has different applications. Um, and in, in all cases, the, this tax is ultimately uh, payable by the final consumer of the goods or the service itself. So the whole idea of VAT is that it's a value added tax. So it's tax that is being added on every single step from production while manufacturing, then to let's say, for example, a wholesaler, a retailer, 
and then it keeps adding until it reaches the final customer or the end user who will be the person who is paying the whole burden of the tax. In comparison with income tax, um, income tax is just a tax that you pay on your income. Well, it's quite self-explanatory. Uh, and basically, you pay income tax on money that you earn, for example, from your employment, if you are um, employed by a company, um, or um, you can or you can you, you have to pay income tax on profits that you make if you are self-employed or you're just a small uh, small business who is just starting and then you can pay income tax on some uh, state benefits as far as I'm aware on some grants and support pay support payments so basically the income tax is something that you pay kind of at the end of the financial year when your accountants uh, calculate um, I believe, all your income, all the revenue from the sales, um, and then they compare it towards your um, purchases. And based on that, where you have more purchases or more income, you're gonna pay some kind of tax on it. Um, I mean, that's also, you have also their uh, business taxes like corporate tax, uh, etc. But then this is a whole different world of taxation, which I'm afraid I do not specialize in. Okay. But the most important thing is to know that VAT is a tax that is being added on each stage, each stage of the process um, when you're doing business. Like for example, when you buy uh, goods from a German seller, they're charging you VAT. Then you're selling this to someone else, you're charging again VAT. When the other person sells to them customer, they're charging VAT as well. So okay. you have on each stage, you have a charge of VAT. That's, of course, in very simple w words. You have then a lot of complications, implications, um, etc., which we will slightly go through this evening. Yeah. Um, but then that's why you have advisors like myself who are there to assist you and explain in much more details. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> yeah, you, you did quite a, a long um, explanation there. And... I think we're going to try and break it down a little bit further. Um, so I still want to go back to letting the people truly understand that. So, and then I hopefully uh, we can use figures now. So you uh -huh. say the burden is on the end user. Uh, so, yeah. so basically, if I bought this glass or if i buy this glass a cup uh -huh. um i go to the store uh i or let's say i buy from a seller on amazon okay yeah. uh he he sells it for let's say uh 11 euro 19 okay uh, -huh. uh so that 11 euro 19 has 19 percent which is the vat amount in germany inside of it yeah so now mm -hmm. the question here is, um, I pay for that. It goes to him. Does he keep that money? Is that his money or what does he do with that money? Okay. So there are two, two scenarios here. In the first scenario, um, you're, for example, just yourself, a private citizen yes. who orders something from Amazon. So in this price, as you mentioned, there is 19% VAT included. You pay for it because you're paying the total amount. And basically the money are being collected by, uh, by the seller. So the seller on his behalf needs to take this 19% from the whole income, from the whole revenue that he gets. Which should be nine, about 11. 1 euro 19, thereabouts in... Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, so basically what they will do, they will just take this money and when their uh, VAT return is due, they need to transfer this money to the tax authorities because they're acting as a tax collector, basically. Okay. That's their role. Okay. However, in the second scenario, if you were not just a private citizen, let's say if you were a business... Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. So I, want, I, I just want to break uh, it down. So now, as a consumer, yeah. that's first of all... Yeah. I'm a consumer. I'm just a regular person. I don't have any business. I just go on Amazon. Yeah. I buy from an Amazon seller. So now uh -huh. I, I give the Amazon seller 11 euro 19. So that's the, I, I want to go step by step. So everybody gets this. 
I give the seller yep. 11 euro 19. He gets 11 euro 19. So tell me what does he do? Like he takes, he has to take that 19% off of that 11 euro 19. Uh, so now we're going to go to now the seller. Okay. Who's now the Amazon business guy, Amazon, uh, 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 uh maybe FBA or FBA. It doesn't matter, but he's a businessman. Yep. Now, uh -huh. what? So, so let's assume he bought this cup, okay, for let's say five euros, okay. Uh -huh. Then once again, he pays. Let's say let's assume he bought the cup here within Germany, okay. He bought it for five euros, okay. So how much from that five euro does he pay as VAT? And just kind of like walk us through now the whole scenario. A seller who buys his uh, goods in within the territory of Germany for five euros, and then he turns around, sells it for 11 euro 19. He collects VAT 19%, okay, uh, from me. Yeah. And then now he pays somebody else five euro and also pays VAT. So walk us through the scenario. What happens? What is he, what is he supposed to do and how does that play out? Yeah. So the first, uh, in the first, the first thing that happens, actually, the seller that you buy from, as you mentioned, buys this, this glass for five euros from another trader somewhere in Germany, whether it's a shop or another seller, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. He buys it for five euros. And there is uh, the VAT element already calculated inside these five euros. Yeah. So I think that's what uh, 80, 80, almost one cents? euro. Oh, almost yeah. yeah. Almost one euro. Approximately. About ninety nine cents, yeah. maybe ninety yeah, ninety yeah. something cent. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this ninety cents basically, this is as a business because he's a business person. Obviously, he buys this this glass and he then needs to resell it somewhere else. So when he buys and pays these five euros, uh, in this amount, it's already included the 19%, as we said. Mm -hmm. Now, this 19% that he paid, for him, it's so-called VAT on the purchase. Okay. So it's a purchase VAT. Okay, purchase VAT. That's something a VAT that you paid, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because you mentioned that VAT is a tax that goes on each stage, once you decide to resell this glass to another person, to the end consumer, you're going to charge again VAT. But then because you're selling, this is now you're charging VAT on the sale itself. And that's your output VAT. Okay. So you have the purchase VAT when Input. you when okay. you buy the goods and when you pay. And then you have the output VAT or the sale VAT when you make the sale to the end consumer. Now then consumer will get the, the invoice. He will pay the whole amount and then that's it. Okay. You you get the 11, 11 euros and nineteen cents. Okay, so now you know let's. From this amount. Sorry to cut you up. Let's take it down. So let's only uh, talk about the VAT amount. Let's not talk about the entire. So yeah. how I've collected, I paid. He collected eleven euro nineteen from me. Out of that eleven euro nineteen, one euro yeah. nineteen is VAT. He bought from okay. somebody else. He gave exactly. them. Uh, five euros out of that five euros he paid 90 cents let's go with 90 cents it, it could be more or less so now uh -huh. so let's talk about that yeah. now he paid 90 cent vat to uh exactly. supplier a he collected one euro 19 vat from consumer a so now walk us through what okay. he does with that so now uh, it comes the end of the month, for example, when you need to file your return and you, you need to tell the tax office, hey, guys, actually, I made this sale on this glass. I paid for it um, 90, 90 something uh, VAT, but then I also sold it to another person and I collected one euro and 19 uh, cents in terms of VAT. So basically now the tax office says, OK, just declare it in your return which means that you're going to put the, the VAT on the sale, which is one euro and something. You will deduct from it the, the VAT that you already paid, because as we mentioned, you're a business, you're not the end consumer, you should not be the one who takes the burden of it. 
So you're basically claiming it back. And then actually you're just paying to the tax office the difference between um, one euro and 19 cents and 90 cents, which is min minimum. Oh, 30 like cents, something one. like that. Yeah, exactly. So you're just paying to the tax office 30 cents. Mm, awesome. Okay. <clears throat> so now um, uh, the VAT, I, I think we should have okay. asked this question. I, and I want to, because I don't really want to, I don't know if you know the answer to this question. What, what exactly, I mean, why exactly are we paying VAT? Like, what does the government do with it? What is it used for? I mean, why is there even VAT? Do you know the answer to that? Yeah, so basically, it's pretty much the same answer with all the taxes. Uh, they're just taken from different um, different stakeholders, let's call them. You have the personal taxes, which are for um, um, people who are just employed. Then you have the business taxes, which are levied on companies. And you have, for example, VAT, taxes <clears> on <throat> customs, excise, etc. So what governments do with all these taxes is basically they raise money um, to, to, de to, uh, to deliver their spending priorities and to fund key public uh, services, such as uh, schools, uh, health systems, um, armed forces. So basically, that's their way of uh, breaching their budget gap, if there is any. And that's how they um, they 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 raise money for all these governmental um, services. Interesting. Okay, interesting. Did not know that. Awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to a question that I kind of like get a lot of times and I'm hoping you know the answer. And this is pertaining mostly to Germany. Um, now, okay. we in Germany, oh, by the way, guys, uh, Dimitri is in the UK, so he's not based in Germany. Uh, we didn't, we, we forgot to mention that. Um, but he does handle VAT for all across um, uh, Europe. Okay, now for Germany, there is what we call the uh, Klein Unternehmer. That's it's mm -hmm. Klein Unternehmer, which means a small business. Um, now, in Germany, from my understanding, it says if you're a small business, like a Klein, registered as a Klein Unternehmer, yes, you don't have to collect this VAT if you know you're not going to make more than 22,000 euros exactly. in yeah. a year. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, You're right. Now, uh, the question now is, uh, as a registered uh, uh, um, client unternehmer, does that work on Amazon? Do you know the answer? Like, is that a good move? Do I need to, can I be a client unternehmer and uh, not collect VAT for Amazon? I don't know if you know. The so end. just to, just to start from the beginning, what you said, uh, yes, you're correct. If you're a small business who who is who who sell for less than twenty two thousand euros, you're not obliged by the tax authorities to register for VAT. Meaning that if you do sales, you're not collecting any VAT um, on these sales. Um, however, always exists the so-called voluntary registration. And we always advise, especially e-commerce traders, no matter how, how big or small they are, is to register for VAT, uh, especially on Amazon. It's very important uh, maybe to do it as one of the very first uh, very first steps and plan ahead before you start, start your sales, or even if you start yourself, your sales, mm -hmm. do it at the beginning. Uh, because if you, if you trade, I think it's called uh, under FBA, um, Amazon, for example, will start moving your stock across Europe quite quickly, and this triggers various uh, VAT obligations. And of course, as every trader, you want to expand your sales, your sales to grow, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that, of course, your obligations are becoming higher and higher. So we always recommend first register for VAT in the country where you are established, mm -hmm. or at least where you're going to place your stock, which is Germany in this case. Register for VAT in Germany, and then you have one problem less on your head, mm -hmm. and then you take it from take it from from there. 
but again as we mentioned the threshold for registration is 22,000 euros in germany in each country is is different different yeah. um so it depends on the country legislation um and you just need to submit the documents and um, register we, we can assist you with that of course as well um if you need the help of a tax advisor okay and now in terms of amazon sellers um i think most amazon sellers that i have worked with they always do the step and register first because you can claim back the vat that you pay on any purchases on any stock that you buy to, to stock the warehouse of amazon mm. um so you can claim it back through your uh, german return oh, okay so it's just advisable to just go ahead and register immediately yeah. for vat to avoid yeah. uh, the complications that might uh, arise uh that's know, for example if you are like yourself as you mentioned klein i can pronounce it it's in german language mm-hmm. um but if, you, if you're a small business in germany klein, now if name, you are yeah. a foreign uh, foreign trader who is willing to start selling on amazon in germany no matter how much you are selling the moment you want to sell on amazon and you're a foreigner you need to register for vat straight away okay. that's just a requirement so they can just to cor- just to correct what he said uh, not that if you're a foreigner living in Germany, if you're somebody living yeah, yeah. Outside, yeah, outside Germany of. and you yes. want to okay. sell uh, in the mm-hmm. German market, you must have yeah. the uh, VAT number to sell on the German uh, exactly. market. Cool. If um, you're US based, for example, when you want to sell in Germany, you definitely must register. Otherwise, no one's going to allow you to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're going to allow you to open your seller account and then they ask, they ask you for the registration. Yeah, eventually, yeah. Amazon will allow you to open your Seller Central yeah. account, but then eventually they will request your VAT number. Awesome. Yeah. Um, each country in Europe has different um, VAT amounts. Um, I'm going to put the different uh, VAT percentage on the screen so we know uh, what each country um uh, charges. Uh, so okay. now th- here's a, here's one of the also com- a little bit very complicated, not a little bit. <laughs> now we're going to jump into it right right away. There's what we call OSS. Uh, that's the mm-hmm. one stop shop. Uh, and I'm going to let you explain that. Um, now, when you sell or when I sell in um, Germany and my product or somebody let's say for instance in france buys my product directly from me okay on amazon and i ship from germany this is fbm now not fba i ship the product directly from my warehouse in germany to that person in france Uh, do i charge him german vat or do I, because I know the French VAT is 22%, or do I charge him the German, uh, or the French VAT amount, twenty, uh, which is 22%? Okay, um, so back to your question. Um, in regards, in order to explain the OSS, we need actually to explain how it was introduced and why because it's just a simplification for uh, e-commerce traders now before 1st of july 2021 uh, starting sellers uh, who are at the beginning of their journey when they were selling for example from germany let's say to france you are supposed to charge german vat at 19 percent until certain certain limit like the threshold that we discussed for Germany, which is 20,000 20, uh, euros. 22,000. Uh, 22,000 euros. In each country, there were different thresholds uh, at that time. And tax authorities said, okay, so if you're an um, e commerce seller um, and you're selling to my country, let's say France, all the sales that you make until this level, let's say let's say in france was 70 i think it was 50 but let's say until 50000 pounds you charge vat of your own country and the french customer will pay it so once you have collected it you declare it in your return 
and that's it. Your tax administration takes the money. However, once you have reached this money, this 50,000 and you go be beyond them, you need to start, you need to register for VAT in France and you need, you need to start uh, charging French VAT. So we as a tax authorities can collect uh, this money so we can bridge our gap and fund our services. Now, as you can imagine with a lot of sellers who are starting, especially with Amazon coming on the map, um, a lot of traders start selling through Amazon. It caused massive uh, backlog for tax offices in terms of registration, in terms of chasing uh, taxpayers. Because you can imagine not many people know what VAT is when they start. And once you start getting all these emails from Amazon, you owe this money to France, da -da -da. some people get scared, they don't pay VAT, and then this becomes a whole problem, new problem for the tax authorities. So at that at some point they said, hold on, we need to figure out a simpler way, simpler way for us. Uh, because when they drop draw the draw the line and they saw that they have, I think it was eight billion approximately gap that they estimated uh, in terms of VAT, which was not collected properly. They said, hold on, this is a lot of money. We need to figure out um, a way how to sort this out. So they they came up with the one-stop shop uh, system, or we call it OSS. And what they did very cleverly is they said, we're going to remove all these thresholds or these limits in Europe. So the moment you start selling, you register for VAT, or there is a very minimum level of 10,000 euros. So if you are a new seller right now and you start selling, you have 10,000 euros worth of sales anywhere in Europe before you start registering for OSS, for example. If you go above the 10,000, you have to register for sure for the OSS. If you if you don't, then you can you can sell a little bit, not necessarily register for the OSS, and then you just charge the rate of your own country, like 19% in Germany. Mostly traders prefer to register voluntarily straight away for the one-stop shop system, which means that once you sell to France, you charge French uh, VAT rate. If you sell to Spain, you charge Spanish VAT rate. If you, charge, if you sell an uh, order to Italy from your German warehouse, you charge Italian VAT on the invoice. And now at the end of the, of the quarter, because these returns for further simplification are actually on quarterly basis, you have to declare all these sales to different countries to your tax administration. In this, in this uh, instance, we're talking about the German authorities. Uh, I think it's the Finanz Finanzamt, right? The Finanzamt, yes, correct. Yeah, exactly. So you complete your OSS declaration, uh, which we will we'll be more than happy to assist you with. Um, and then we, se we send this uh, return to the tax administration and you pay all the money together to the German tax office. And what the German tax office does afterwards, they review the documents, they see all the transactions, they see the money that you paid, and then they're distributing these payments to each tax administration that needs to collect them. But the simplification comes from there are no obligations for you to register in each single country. You're just registering for VAT in Germany and you're paying the amount only to uh, Germany. And then the German tax administration distributes the each share to each tax office. Hmm. Uh, um, <laughs> they found a way to make the stuff really complicated. Uh, <laughs> but OK, so that's the way it is. Now, yeah, um, you 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 kind of like put OSS in a very simple, uh, simplified way. Um, that's OSS. From my understanding, okay, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, for me to um, file OSS means that I. Uh, sold a product to somebody outside Germany and that person for example is in France they paid me 19% in Germany is that correct 19% German VAT on the product they bought 
Is that correct? That's my question. No, in terms of, in terms of OSS. In terms of OSS. Uh, if sorry? Yes, in terms of OSS. So if I sell this glass to somebody in France, okay, directly, do they pay me 19% German VAT or do they pay me 22% uh, French VAT? That's, that was my main question. They pay you French, they pay, they pay you French VAT because you registered for this one-stop shop simplification. Oh. And that, that, as I mentioned, that's the whole point. You you pay, I mean, even though you're just registered in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, your VAT number now is valid for all the Europe. So if you're selling from your German uh, warehouse a product to someone in France, you are straight away um, liable to collect the French the, percentage of oh, VAT. Okay, that, that was that was the if confusion. You, okay, so you're saying... Yeah, if you're... Okay, when he uh, Sorry, when he no? comes to my Amazon store, Amazon when he comes to my Amazon Germany, whether he's in France, whether he's in Italy, or Belgium, like I know Italy is twenty one percent and Belgium is like twenty percent. So if he buy if he's if he's from uh, Belgium, and he buys from my German store, he pays twenty percent on that product, twenty percent VAT on that product, I collect the 20% yes. and I give it to my finance arm. That's the tax authorities yes. here in Germany. The tax authorities now exactly. pay that money to the Belgian tax authorities. Okay. Yes. So basically, once you have registered uh, for the OSS or the one stop shop, you must submit a quarterly um, declaration in, in the country of registration. In this, in this case, this is Germany. Mm -hmm. And this, this return is submitted um, additionally to any domestic VAT obligations that you might have in terms of filing a report. Now, all OSS eligible sales which are made to EU customers um, and the VAT which is collected in total on all these uh, sales made to EU countries um, are included in the OSS return. And when we declare it, we, we write um, Recross has uh, has sold for 2,000 euros um, to Spain, for 5,000 euros to uh, Italy, and then he sold those goods to Poland for 15,000 euros, for example. And they know how much VAT you have collected, and you need to transfer this money to the, uh, to the German tax authorities, and then they'll distribute these shares to each tax office accordingly, so they can get their money, and story is uh, closed for this quarter. Next quarter, the same thing. <laughs> but as I mentioned, this is in addition to your um, kind of normal uh, um, domestic uh, reporting obligation. Um, would like me to explain a little bit about this as well? Yes, yes, please. Okay. So, for example, in, in comparison to the OSS, once you register for VAT, whether it's in Germany or in any, any other country um, across Europe, you have uh, the so-called monthly or quarterly um, filings of VAT. So basically, that's the way you declare to the tax authorities how much sales you have made uh, and how much VAT you have collected and how much VAT you have paid on purchases yourself as a business. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Now, you have to do that based on uh, the time frame that they have provided you. As I mentioned, this can be either monthly or quarterly. And on these declarations, you include the output VAT, which is the, the VAT on your sales. And you, you can minus the purchase VAT that you have done, and which is, of course, only for business reasons. You cannot cl claim VAT on um, purchases which are not business related. I mean, if you paid VAT for, um, I don't know, for soap for your home, you cannot mm -hmm. collect this VAT. Yeah, that's, that's not, not a business. business related. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, so VAT in this sense, VAT is reported in two in two forms: the output VAT, um, which you charge your customers, um, and the input VAT, which you pay to your suppliers when you buy the stock for your Amazon um, warehouse. Okay. <coughs> Um, and that's done in each in each country. 
Um, very important when we touch base about this is once you register for, if you decide to trade under the FBA um, terms uh, with Amazon, mm -hmm. it's a very common uh, issue that, for example, you're a German seller who has just registered, you're starting your business activity at the moment, you have put uh, some goods in the warehouse in Germany of Amazon, and then you apply for is it called pan um, european yeah the pan european uh, yes the pan european yes exactly so this means <clears throat> that you give permission to amazon to move your um your goods your stock within europe across their warehouse yes across their warehouse yeah. in europe correct across the warehouses in europe so they can do the prime um you know delivery swaps and all this stuff yeah now with that said and this is always in the very fine um, silver lining of the contract. Um, the moment they move your goods in other warehouses, you are immediately responsible for registering for VAT in these in this, in this countries. Okay. Why? Because tax authorities say there is no way that, for example, Rick Ross is moving goods to moving his goods to Italy, mm -hmm. and he's not registered. Or VAT because we cannot we cannot check what's happening with the movement of these goods. Are they here? Are they being sold? What's happening? Okay. And here is very important to say that any any trading platform, any e-commerce platform, whether it's Amazon, eBay, Sh Shopify, um, etc., all these big e-commerce platforms or marketplaces, actually, more specifically, they feedback all this information on all the sales from traders to the tax authorities. So even if let's say you say, oh, I'm going to skip, I'm not going to declare, I'm not going to register <laughs> for VAT. I'll just keep this VAT for me for the month because I didn't calculate something properly. The tax authorities will know before you even know. Mm. And we have, we have had many occasions when um, traders come to us and they're like, oh, I received these letters from the tax authorities. These are penalties. What are we gonna do? Can you help me out? We can try, but if you, you know, if you, if you, if you register for VAT, you have your obligations to follow, and there, I mean, to pay. Okay, if you if you don't declare your purchases on time, that's okay. All the tax offices are lenient in this case, but if you don't declare your sales on time, that's a big problem. Okay. All the tax offices want their money on time. <laughs> and when we have to do this, that's very simply explained. I mean, in more technical language, you have tax points, uh, place of taxation, etc. But these are very, very um, tech terminology, let's call them, which are um, um, complicated to discuss right now, I would say. Gotcha. It would just mess um, the whole explanation. Okay, so basically, because uh, I, I think you, you already jumped on a point or question I was going to ask eventually. So um, I was, you already answered my question of uh, the, me selling directly from Germany to somebody in France. So he, w there's no, um, yeah, I'm, I got to sell through Amazon but I had to ship it directly because I'm storing it here in Germany. So I ship it directly from Germany to the person in uh, France or in Belgium. So I'm not mm -hmm. obligated at that time to have a French or Belgium VAT number because I am okay. shipping directly from Germany to that person. Now, yeah. he's paying me 22% French VAT, I collect it, I pay this, I hand this money to the German tax authorities, the finance aunt here, they pay that money to France or whoever they need to pay it to. Now, then, here's the second scenario you just said, talked about. If I now ship uh, some products into Amazon, then Amazon says, oh, okay, we got your uh, goods. Uh, we notice, oh, okay, uh, we sell this product better in France. They now store the product in France. That's what you're saying. 
Now, because Amazon is storing my product in France, I need to get a French VAT number. That's the reason why yeah. I need to get it because now my products are being stored in France. But the question is, isn't there a threshold? Like just, okay, so if it's one or two products that there's, let's say it's maybe a total of, let's say 200 euros worth of product or 100 euros worth of product, okay, that they're storing in France for me. So do I still need to get VAT for that little amount? No, no matter how, how many items you move, or whatever the value is, you have to register, even if it's a single product. I now explain why. If you think about it, before the, the European Union and the single market zone, every country uh, was acting for itself, right? So basically, if you are selling goods from then, if you are selling from Germany to Spain, you need to go to customs. You do export of goods. And then these goods will be imported in, in France, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. right? So you have a lot more complicated process, um, custom clearance, paying duties, etc. Now, once they introduced the economic area, they removed these internal borders um, and they said, right, goods can move now freely. However, we still need to know about the movement of these goods. So you cannot, when once you move your um, items from Amazon Germany and they're moved to Amazon France, mm -hmm. you're going to declare in your return that you have made this movement of own goods for this value from Germany to France. Okay. But then somewhere on the French side needs to say, oh, okay, we are just acquiring these goods. Otherwise, Germany is going to say to France in simple terms, hey, France, we have... Chris, uh, uh, Rick Ross has moved that much of inventory and France will say, oh, I don't know about it. Okay. Okay. Right. Got you. So this is and how they track it. it. That's why, exactly. Exactly. And, and there are other, other reports which are going on the background, which are called interstats. For example, uh, these are statistical reports. So with the removal of the borders, um, between the countries, the the union and all the trade statistics uh, needed some kind of um, a tool or something which will give them information about the movement of the goods in the European market, okay. what's going where, for how much, weight, all this stuff. And with the Interstat Declaration, they have developed this uh, this tool which basically businesses feed back this information to them and tell them I moved these goods for that much amount in this month and they went to this person in in france now as i mentioned all these platforms they always they also feed back information to the tax authorities and the tax authorities will know that these goods went went uh, to france it's a matter of time for them to cross check if the person who saw them actually decided to register for vat if not they're going to send a reminder first letter second letter then they start penalizing, and then it goes to tax collection, debt collectors, sorry. Okay, gotcha. Okay, wow. So, um, in, in a nutshell, um, okay, I just wanted to add to this. I guess some people might, because uh, a lot of people don't like to deal with VAT or don't understand it and don't want to jump in getting VAT for all the countries. Uh, you, if you sign up for Amazon Germany, you don't necessarily have to do the pan-European, meaning you don't have to have Amazon store your products everywhere. You can just uh, uh, do the uh, German market only. You could tell, okay, just say Amazon, I just want my products stored only within Germany. So you, you can do that just to test the waters first. If you know, if you're new, and then later on, if you feel, okay, I'm ready, then you can jump into the, uh, you can then switch over to the pan-European uh, program and have them ship to the other countries. Awesome. Okay, we're going to, I'm going to ask you some, hopefully, basic questions about that. Um, 
So when when should I pay or when do I when should I file and pay that? Um, and I know it's different in every so, country, but yes, for for every country it's a different different date. For example, for Germany, uh, your domestic VAT obligations are due by the tenth um, of the month. So, for example, for October, um, it was due by tenth of November. Um, and for example, for all the sales that you do in November, you need to declare them by tenth of December. Now, if this falls on a weekend, like Sunday, then Monday is is um, your deadline. Uh, it may be eleventh in this case yeah. but if it's 10th is monday to friday they, then it's on this date so by this date you have to submit the declaration to the tax authorities and say hello finance i have sold for ten thousand euros um this is the vat i have charged on these sales uh, and i'm making the payment now very important if you if you have to make a payment to tax authorities the tax authorities must have the return and the money in their bank account by the 10th of the month if if you pay if you say oh i'm going to declare the 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 values today which is 10th of uh, october for example mm -hmm. um and i'm going to wire the payment today as well but actually your bank your bank needs 24 hours or 48 hours to make the transfer and the and the tax office gets the money in two days it's very very likely that they're going to charge you for late payment either when you submit the return after the, the the deadline or even the payment after the deadline you can get penalty for late filing and you can get penalty for late payment mm. which is usually a percentage of it can be either a fixed fee or a percentage of um, um of the vat that you owe depends what's the highest of course let's not forget that tax this is another way for tax offices to, to you know just money. raise more money <laughs> exactly Okay, and when should I file and pay OSS also? So the OSS is actually um, quarterly. Basically, this gives enough time uh, for tax authorities also to collect data. As I mentioned, um, you are submitting this information, but then it is also cross-checked on the background with information that they have received from uh, the marketplaces um so you're you're submitting on quarterly basis it's for basically it's for three months you have uh, made all your sales for three months you prepared the return or we prepared the return on your behalf we we send it to the tax authorities and then they say okay let's say for the quarter uh, ending in december so this means that is for october november and december all these sales and the payment for them it should be made by the end of january so for the for the OSS, the deadline is always the end of the following month for payment and for filing the declaration. So January is 31 days, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. By 31st of Jan, the tax office should have your declaration and then you should they should have your payment as well. So they can distribute the shares to, to the respective tax authorities um, mm -hmm. under the OSS scheme. Wow. So just like the local VAT OSS is also due when you file it, so when, when, if it's on the 31st, you need to file it and you need to pay it on that day also, all together. Exactly. The deadline for payment and for filing is usually the same day. In the, for, for OSS, it's always this, uh, for no matter in which country you're registered for OSS, whether it's um, Spain, Germany, France, Mm -hmm. The return, the OSS return is always due at the end of the, um, the month following the quarter. Okay. And this is because this is a simplification and it's across Europe, one and the same for, for everyone. Okay. And basically, that's how all the tax authorities can communicate and feedback gotcha. um, to each other. Now, in regards to what you say as far as the local VAT, that's um, for if local VAT means if if your country, if your uh, home country is, for instance, Germany, um, you have to file, uh, okay, when you start off Amazon, this is, I know this personally, when you start Amazon, you, you normally have to file quarterly. The tax authorities here give you uh, three months, meaning uh, if you, 
there, there are four quarters in the year. So the first quarter is January, February, March, and it goes on like that. So for quarter one, which ends in March, your payment is due on April 10th, or your filing and payment is due on April 10th. Uh, so yeah. I know for a fact, if for any reason that you feel or you think that something might hinder you from making that deadline, that April 10th deadline, just simply communicate with the finance out or the tax authorities uh, and tell them, call them, say, hey, please, guys, I'm having some difficulties, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. I need one week or two weeks. Most likely they'll give it to you. Most likely. I've done it once. They, they gave it to me. Um, and just to put that out there that you yes you, i mean you, you just know. don't have to abuse um the system and uh, their patients i i know that but um you know there was a time the our you know mm -hmm. accountant uh or accounting system went down and we we had no uh you know we didn't foresee that and it went down it went down mm -hmm. and we had to request a, an extension and we got it okay mm -hmm. um so I think we covered a lot of stuff and the we're, we're now rounding up the question now is Demetra if I need VAT services can you tell us can you tell me tell you know the my audience exactly what they should expect if they contact you and say hey I'd like you to uh, take a look at my VAT or see am I doing this right um, so go ahead and tell us what services you offer for them. And, uh, the contact of course, is going to be in the description down below, but just tell us exactly what they should expect if they reach out to you. Um, of course. So as, as a professional agency, uh, we're also governed, um, and we're regulated by the standard standards in the UK. So we have a supervisory body, which is actually the tax administration in the UK called HMRC. Um, so our processes are based on that. But what, what you get from our end, for example, is we can um, always help you with preparing an advice, for example, a written advice on how you can um, trade uh, across Amazon and what you can expect to happen in terms of uh, VAT. Another instance from what we can um, we can help should you become a regular customer of ours and you sign a contract with us uh, on monthly basis or you can provide us with your um, Amazon sales report. Uh, the cross can show you how to download it um, and we will tell you how much VAT you need to you need to pay in your domestic or local VAT return um, and how much, for example. Uh, you have to spare for your OSS filing once you become registered there. Um, we can help you with filing your um, OSS um, returns as well and preparing them. And we can also help you with uh, your domestic um, returns um, at, of course, a fee, uh, which is on a monthly basis. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great. Guys, uh... Thank you so much. I, I hope that we've been able to answer a few questions about VAT. VAT uh, is such a complicated uh, system. People, even I get confused sometimes. I have to, I reach out to Demetra all the time. I ask the same question. I know he yeah. must be tired of again, you know, ask the same question over and over again. I get confused a lot with VAT. Um, and it's, you know, Demetrius is awesome. He's been there. He's helped us, um, almost from when we started really. Um, so much, yeah. I highly recommend him. Uh, please reach out to him. If you are looking for someone to handle your VAT, uh, um, problems, um, and it's, it's a never ending learning process for VAT. So we're constantly learning every day. So guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's your boy, Ricky Ross. Uh, and once again, uh, if you're new to my channel, 
please 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 subscribe like and share the video uh, I do offer one-on-one -on -one mentorship uh, if you're interested please my email will be in the description uh, oh before we sign out uh, I also we forgot to ask this question and that is um, well not it's not a, it's not a question directed to him or uh, there seems to be this especially in Germany it's very difficult to find an accountant who will do your taxes so the way we resolve doing that is by using online platform and the online platform that we've come to use or the, there are two that we kind of use and I'm gonna put them in the description down below so check them out the links will be down below uh, you could use them to file your uh, your VAT taxes as well as your income taxes as well and once you do your VAT taxes here then you can then have Demetra take a look at what you're doing to kind of like advise you much more better because now your things are more organized great I just wanted to put that out there so guys thank you so much for watching I appreciate it please continue to watch we'll try as much as possible to bring more uh, information out there so if there's anything we've missed out here, I know there's a lot of questions we've missed out. Please drop the question in the comment section and hopefully Demetrio or I will be able to answer that question. But if it's VAT related, definitely he'll be the one to answer the question. All right, guys. So this is Thank Ricky Ross signing out. And from Demetrio. Thank you guys. It was a pleasure. I hope you have learned at least the basics. But if you have any questions, please reach out to me or to Ricky Ross and we'll be more than happy to help. Awesome. Have a good day. Great. And I'm out. <laughs>